as any good Subaru should be, it's parked right next to the garbage. All right, so today I'm gonna be doing a little bit to this car, just a couple cosmetic things, and I also wanna go over the mods and stuff since uh, we haven't actually done a video since I first got it, and all it had was like wheels, I think, if I even had wheels when I first got it. Honestly, all the stuff that I did in the past year or two, uh, nothing too special. Um, so making videos about all of it, I mean, you know, there's a million videos on how to put wheels, brakes, intakes, headers, and stuff on a BRZ. So anyways, we have the Magnaflow open house tomorrow, and I want to do some cosmetic stuff with the car. I want to put on the TRD canards where I already have some holes drilled for them on this bumper. And I have to replace one of my side markers, so I couldn't get the same one, so we're gonna end up replacing both of them because this one fell out. But first things first, I gotta pull it out of the garage so I can center it and we can get some of the uh, cosmetic stuff on there thrown on before the car show tomorrow. And then I'm gonna set up my Rock Brothers bicycle rack on the roof and uh, get it ready so I can throw my BMX bike on here and we can bring this car to the Magnaflow open house tomorrow with the BMX bike on it. So let's get started. Barely started there because of good old E85. And if you guys see the garage in the background of any of these shots, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fucking mess right now. My garage looks like shit. I apologize. I gotta clean this up before the next video for sure. Uh, oh, by the way, I have a 29 inch full suspension GT sensor. It's a 2016 and uh, it's a pretty decent entry level mountain bike. If anybody wants to buy it, uh, I'll sell it to you for like 300 bucks as is. All right, so since I wanted to talk about the uh, mods and stuff that I've done since the last BRZ video quite a while ago when I first got this car, uh, let's talk about it. So first modification I want to talk about, there's about a pound and a half of dust sitting on the surface of the vehicle because I haven't fucking washed this thing in like a month and a half. It's been sitting in my garage, so let's talk about what's under the hood. Uh, HPS intake um, with a HKS mushroom filter that's not a knockoff filter, that is a legit HKS filter. Uh, the reason for the choice of HKS filter is honestly just because I think it looks cool. This normally comes with a regular pod filter, but I think the HKS, the HKS mushroom filter looks dope, so that's why I'm using it. And I did do some testing and rescaled the math for this intake. Uh, it is on E85. Um, it's got some PLM unequal length headers on it. Uh, it is not catless. It has a Magnaflow cat in the midpipe, and uh, after the PLM headers, it's just a custom uh, Magnaflow catted and Magnaflow resonated uh, two and a half inch pipe all the way back to the axle back and then I have an HKS <coughs> high power muffler back here with the burnt tip. Get a shot of that guy. So anyways, uh, as far as engine mods go, that's about it. It's tuned on an OFT um, it's mostly the stock OFT E85 Stage 2 Plus tune. I haven't changed a whole lot about it, but it does have a little bit of crackle. And I did do some rescaling of the uh, MAF for the new intake because the OFT tune is for the factory intake. So uh, the intake scaling took some testing, but it does feel a little bit faster than the regular off the shelf. Uh, E85 stage two plus tune, not by too much, but it's, it's a little bit puffier. Uh, anyways, moving on to the wheels, <clears throat> Graham Light 57 CRs um, with about seven and a half pounds of brake dust on the surface of them. 
uh, and behind that got some stop tech slotted rotors and some stop tech uh, sport pads. Uh, might go to EBC on the next run of brakes, but these brakes are still pretty fresh, so I'm going to be using them for a while. And uh, the Gram lights are in mag blue. I got really lucky with this color. Uh, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. They're 17 by 9. I have the General G-Max <clears throat> tires in 255, 40, 17. So real chunky, beefy boys for a non-turbo BRZ. But if you guys know the kind of tires that I've been running on my Outback for years, you guys know I like big, beefy tires. They ride good. And even though they numb the steering just a tiny bit, the grip kind of makes up for it in my opinion. So that's what we've got uh, on the actual wheels, brakes, setup. Engine's not too special. Interior, this is honestly probably my favorite thing that I've done to the car so far. If I can get the lights on. We have a Buddy Club carbon fiber steering wheel that is compatible with the factory airbag. Guys, I know that you get a lot of clout from the quick release steering wheels that, you know, with the NRG quick release hubs and stuff like that. But if you're not driving like a 1990s, you know, drift car or something that didn't come with an airbag, like, it, de depending on what state you're in, your insurance might not cover you if you get into an accident in a vehicle that you willingly removed the airbag in. So just keep that in mind. And also, don't drive without an airbag, like in a street car. If it's your track car or whatever, it's probably safer for you to not have an airbag and instead have a roll cage and a harness. But on a street car, just leave your fucking airbag in the car, man. Come on. And that's why I got this steering wheel, so that I could have a nice steering wheel that feels good in the hand and looks dope as fuck, but still has an, my actual airbag in it. So thanks, shout out to Buddy Club. It wasn't cheap, but it was worth every penny. Um, and I have the shift pattern there since I don't have it on the actual shift knob for the very rare occasions that this thing actually has to get valeted. Uh, or if my mom needs to drive it so she knows where reverse is. Uh, and then I've got this aftermarket Android 10 head unit and I pretty much just use it for my Bluetooth and that's about it. Uh, I have a lip for the bottom that'll probably be here in a couple weeks or something. It's coming from China, so it's gonna probably take a while. But it's one of the cheap lips. Honestly, I've driven over so many lips that I'm not going to go out and buy a $3,000, you know, body kit for my, uh, what's essentially my track car slash drift car slash weekend warrior car. So I'm not gonna go out of my way to buy a crazy body kit for this thing. I just wanna, you know, make it look decent and be able to have fun with it. Fog lights are gone. I do wanna make some brake vents from the fog light holes in the future, but that's a future project that you guys will be included on when I actually do it, so I can go show you how I end up doing it. Beyond that, uh, well, there's a bit of an elephant in the room and that is this. The Big Country Labs Atmosphere de Demolisher, Destroyer, whatever the hell they call it. Uh, and of course I have the requisite Valentis on the back of this thing. And my license plate says, go eight. This wing actually has a story. Uh, this wing was given to me by my friend Andre, who we are going to see at the MagnaFlow open house tomorrow. And uh, we're probably gonna ride bikes and he's probably gonna skate afterwards. So we're probably gonna hit up a skate park. But uh, yeah, so this wing was given, me to, given to me by my friend Andre. Um, his neighbor, I think the story was that his neighbor backed into it and uh, knocked off the end plate and um, broke the fiberglass underneath. So if you see, it's not exactly straight up and down there but if you look down here i kind of <laughs> i use some flex seal and some bondo some fiberglass patcher to actually get those wing nuts to sit back in but this is the 1700 millimeter uh big country labs uh wing and that was my roommate christian it is not the brz kit for this because usually that kit sits all the way back here and it mounts on the corner right there uh this is just the universal mount kit with the uh, hollowed out uprights. This is as tall as this wing can get. And the reason why I'm running this setup and not the actual BRZ setup is because they don't sell the BRZ mounts individually. So I had to do 
uh, this kind of thing. And also the reason for the double wing here is because if any of you have ever owned one of these, if you take off the stock spoiler, there's like 10 holes on the bumper and uh, I didn't want to just put little plugs in there, at least not for now, you know, maybe in the future, I'll take this off, plug those holes or I'll do something with that other trunk up there. But in the meantime, this sits here to cover up the holes. I might replace it with something a little bit smaller, a little bit more subtle, paint match it so it looks a little bit better. But yeah, that's the story of this wing. Uh, a sticker that'll probably get me demonetized. Um, and uh, the independent skateboard truck sticker on this side and the other side with the Thrasher Skating for Satan design that was left on there from my buddy Andre who gave this to me and because he gave this wing to me, uh, I felt like it would be wrong for me to remove the stickers that he put. So I left these on here and I added some of my own, which will probably get this video demonetized. This one is my buddy Corey. Uh, he owns a small sticker company based out of Illinois and it's called Cool Select and I will link it down in the description. He's awesome, his designs are fantastic. He's got a whole bunch of really, really cool, awesome decals from this Cool Select brand that he's created. So I'll link that down in the description down below. And what else, what else is there? I got these stick-on things for the side fender garnishes, make it look a lot better. Carbon fiber stick-on mirror panels. And it's just aesthetic stuff, but. So yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, there's not a whole lot more done to the car to talk about. It's a uh, pretty basic, you know, suspension. Oh my God, coilovers. <laughs> so. You probably can't see them. Oh yeah, you kind of can. So it's got the Tyne Flex Z 32A adjustable with the damper set and the um, camber plates in the front and all that. So it is fully adjustable. And I also have white line end links front and rear. I have OBX sway bars uh, with the OBX polyurethane bushings. I have uh, I don't know how I forgot about this. White line rear control arms, lower control arms. Uh, all of the alignment stuff in the back and the front is white line, except for the front lower control arms being Racer X custom fab control arms, which I will throw a photo up right here next to my head. But the Racer X control arms are awesome. They make the front end super responsive and super stiff. They are kind of noisy, kind of clicky. So I'm trying to sort that out and get that problem figured out. Probably in the next couple videos here, we'll go over it. Uh, but beyond that, not a whole lot left to do besides just throwing some canards on it and uh, throwing the turn signals back on and then taking it over to the car wash and getting the bike rack on it, so let's go. All right, so I guess we're not doing this today because I am missing the actual little piece. Uh, I'll put a photo of it right there somewhere. Um, there's a little plastic arm that plugs into this connector and slides down into here and it actually holds this in place and I completely forgot about that and that went missing when the actual other side marker went missing. Uh, <clears throat> anyone who has a BRZ knows that if you even scrape the bottom of this bumper a little bit coming out of a parking lot, half the time these side markers pop out and so does the thing that holds them in place. So right now I just have this fucking cable here and uh, I can't plug these in yet, so next time. Next video, we'll actually fix this. I'm just gonna look like shit tomorrow over at Magnaflow, but that's not really a big deal. If I can seek one. All right, so this is a Rock Brothers sucker bike rack. Enjoy cycling, enjoy this. I, this is probably like, some really cheap Chinese shit. Everybody's gonna probably be talking shit on the comments. Why didn't you get a sea sucker? Why didn't you get a sea sucker? Uh, because sea suckers are $300. And I know sometimes you get what you pay for, but I don't have $300 because this YouTube money ain't rolling in yet. So I bought this guy right here for a slight discount of 149, but I think it's available on Amazon for 169 I believe but you guys can go check it out again you can see right here rock bros suction cup bike rack 
So right here we've got the it's the main part right there. We've got the axle, the front axle holder. This will hold the forks. <clears throat> got I'm not sure what this is. I'll read the instructions and figure it out. And then we have the rear wheel holder that'll hold the rear wheel on the back window. So let me figure out how to put this together and then we'll throw it in the car. great spot for it that is definitely a great spot for it but i'm sorry r i'm gonna have to remove all your decals from the back window and relegate them to toolbox duty from now on because i need the space for the suction cup sorry buddy all right Never forget the crank strap, unless you want fucking this on the freeway for 600 miles if you're going on a road trip. And uh, let's make sure the forks are tight. All right. This seems legit. I don't know. I mean, doesn't seem like it's coming off. All right, now, real thing. Now you are gonna tell me if it's gonna fucking hit the garage or not. Is if it if it does hit the garage? But if I could if I could just barely squeeze this in here on the car, I might just like go down to like a 9.75 inch rise bar. <laughs> Oh, bro, all day. It's it's solid, yeah. bro. Yeah, you got like four inches. Oh, dude, I got four inches in a lot of places. Oh, sick. That's perfect. That's sick because I can actually park my car in here with the bike on it. Oh, that that goes hard. That's dope. Well, if the bike comes off, so is the top of your car. I mean. The wobbling is not super confidence inspiring, but from what I understand, the sea sucker does the same thing, and also the roof of the BRZ is just kind of thin metal, so uh -huh. maybe. But uh, I mean, going off of so far, uh, looks all right. I'm gonna go fucking drive it around and find out. Yeah. All right, let's go. Oh. I made a terrible mistake. I have not thought this through. Fuck. I can't open the trunk. Well, not with the bike on it. I can take the bike off and then open the trunk, but this is uh, mildly frustrating. <laughs> Who put the fuck put this here? You. Shut up. We still have to get my bike in. Fuck, okay, I actually have to take it off then. Uh. Okay, uh, I'm about to go out for the first drive with the bike on the car. Let me just get one more. Okay, I don't think that's going anywhere. So we're an undisclosed distance from my house and uh, the bike is still on the vehicle. So I think, uh, I think we're, uh, I think we're okay. Maybe, hopefully. I guess we'll see, we're gonna go ride uh, We're gonna go ride uh, Carlsbad Alga Norte Skate Park. Um, that park is pretty fun. It's mostly street, and I haven't really been doing a whole lot of riding for the past week because I'm still, I'm coming off an injury that I had, and I, I don't know if I have a clip of it, but if I do, I'll show it. Uh, I'm coming off an injury, so. I'm probably not gonna ride too crazy today. I'm not gonna be riding in my best, but I need to do something besides sit in my house, so that's what we're doing. 
All right, we made it. What's up, Hawker? So this guy has ridden his bike twice in like the past seven years, right? Yes. Sound like seven or eight years? Yes. Yeah. So, so I gave him a bike. I built him a bike. And uh, now he's going to ride it over here. So don't expect good footage. I'm coming off of an injury to my leg and he is uh, just getting back into it. So footage probably not going to be great, but we're going to have a good time anyways. And there's also other riders here so we can film them. Homeboy's got to drink one of those warm cans of liquid courage before he starts riding. This is the ones that we found at the car wash. Yeah. Given to uh, us by an uh, anonymous source. So, cheers to that guy. There goes half of it. Let's go. <laughs> hey, pick that up. Don't be a little bug. <laughs> You're gonna send that 180, right? Send the 180. Yo, he's shredding, he's shredding. Oh, Ollie in the bag tail on the quarter pipe? That's sick. That's super sick. Got you, I got you. <laughs> the alley oop there. That was sick. There we go, there we go, there we go. Huh. Yeah, I told you you'd be fine. Oh, oh, yeah! <laughs> Actually hopped out of the 180. I told you, I told you. Lights are about to go out. Session's pretty much over. Only got a few tricks filmed and rode a little bit, but once again, coming off an injury. So, gotta take it a little bit easy for at least another week or so. But, good thing we ran into some cool riders. We got some other footage for you guys to watch and that's gonna be cool. Uh, and that's about it for tonight. Tomorrow, it's gonna be the Magnaflow open house and uh, I guess we're gonna take the BRZ there with the bike on it. And uh, after that, we're gonna go have a session with my skate buddy, Andre, and check out his uh, 335i as well. So with a snap of my fingers, it will be tomorrow.